this check. Hello. I know they are boys, they are boys. Young, it's a sweet idea, she shall and shave, you know? The name is Christian L and you're watching Black Nation TV Extended Play. Today we are honored to be sitting here with super musician. Okay, my name is Cool Cat, aka Fijampana, aka Esman Bombara, aka Inter Party aka International Bandula, aka Backpack Bandula, aka Uptown Scotana, aka Songo Fontaine, aka We're Coming to a City, aka Fintech Hambali. Okay, uh, shop shop. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Hi, man. Yeah. Like, can you please tell the people that don't know already what you do? Um. Okay, my name is Cool Cat. I do. My my actual name is Smiso. So, as an artist, as a music artist, um, I work as Okay, my name is Cool Cat. The international fan too. That's my Mumbai. Um, all about you know um, cultivating minds in South Africa. Um, basically, it's a very, it's a social experiment what I'm doing through art, through music, through design, through fashion. It's like, yeah, that's what I do: cultivating minds in South Africa, uh, pushing art, pushing art in the right direction, shopping, you know, yeah. So we saw so before Martin Luther King. How was it growing up in Lazi in the 80s and 90s? Uh, basically, 83 born, um, 89 semi clever, Nyana. So, 89, you know, like we went to, we went through a mini war here in South Africa, IFP and NC. In Durban, it was crazier. Maybe here it was different, but Durban was crazier because, you know, we're all Zulu. Whereas here it's like the Zulus were IFP mainly and everybody else. So, it was just a crazy experience. It was crazy that time. Even now, Lars is still crazy. It's like the youth here in, in Joe was very progressive, you know. So, yeah, man, I picked up a lot. A lot of stuff like I, I talk about, I see, then some stuff I've done myself. But it's, it's about like it's about like communicating these characters that are around us. And maybe just a mindset of where we are or where we could be. Yeah. So, how does a boy from Lars do? Get to to a point where he's doing the type of music that you are doing in a conservative country like that. Like, how did that come about? How did that whole thing come into fruition? Um, yeah, I think yeah, it could be as deep as when did I start drawing like grade two to why did I start drawing like the guy who put me on to that and people I've met in my life, which is a long story. Maybe you guys need to wait for the book. And um, but it's like. I guess it's uh, just being at the right place at the right time. Not really. It's not really chance. It's not really destiny. I don't know what it is. But maybe in my head, this is what I wanted from. Because growing up, like even even back then in the 80s, my mom would ask me what I wanted to be, and I always wanted to be Chinese, and I believed it was possible. And even like further than that, like when I was older. Like having talks with my with my mom or girls in general, and she was like, I could bring any any kind of race into into the house, you know. So that just opened me up. Maybe like impact to only it was the best, I'd, I'd say, you know, because uh, it was single mom vibe. So I, like the dad, I was already like my my own man, you know what I mean. But she just comes with the fifty percent of being the mom. So it sounds like you've always known, have you always known, in fact, the type of music that you want to get into, or is this something that kind of shaped you, shaped it as you grew up, or is it something that you've always known, like this type of music that you're doing now? Nah, music, music for me was, I wasn't making music, and my cousin, the guy that put me on, he left school at grade three, he was, he was very smart, and yeah, so, that guy put me on, and um, I think who's on the come on that, and then maybe just even hanging out with him, like grade one, grade two, 
was enough to be like, you can be whatever you want. Him coming back from school and saying, I don't want to go back, and being the other prodigy, uh, you know? So, so yeah. that's, that, that's, that's part of the journey that actually shaped me. You know, yeah, I'd spot. say, yeah. Yeah, I'd say, and in high school, Danny yeah. Paul at some point, yeah. for like four years, in Danny Paul, yeah. um, and then I started dancing, like proper, like, then I left soccer, and then I started dancing. So from the dancing, then it's like, then you have your ear pa padded now, it's like, suyas, what kind of music yeah. will make people dance, or rather, you you have an ear for good music now. Because, yeah. like, we went so deep with dancing with my crew, where it's like, we realized, we didn't go to school for it, but basically, it's Pantura, but Shaya is something new after it's Pantura, which is way more progressive. But it's an attempt to tell me, man. We were one of the pioneers of that, you know? Wow. Mm, lots of many, many people know about that in you. A lot of people. Actually, Durban, who's an attack, because of Jay. But in terms of the pioneers. They know. They, they know. know. Uh, the wow. crew was called Auction Culture, yeah. my crew. Yeah. And then the Konai crew, this one cat, two Stuak. Yeah. This crew, I'm sorry, it'd be just Google. Yeah. And then there's this other crew from Andazi, that D, two are my groupies. And they're actually making quite the tracks now, my bullies, you know what I mean? They're actually on the second step also, like me. So it's like, um, so yeah. So that molded your own musical journey? Yeah, I'd say, I and mean, I guess, yeah, when I got to high school, it was like, high school, because I also, I was very good at, at writing English. Yeah. And I was, even now, I'm better at writing than speaking English, you know? So, like that, uh, being maybe be, being in those schools, because I went to like a college school in high school. I went to uh, a township school in primary, and then I probably went to like a semi uptown Indian school. And then I don't think it's actually uptown for standard five. But yeah. So it's like all the schools I went to, they never offered art. Oh, okay. So it's like you're always the guy that draws the whole time, or the yeah. guy. A dancer, there's no but there's, like there's no dance as a subject, so you dance a mago, you or beauty pageant, or you know what yeah. I mean, stay awake. Yeah. But you, you that character that uh, caters for that kind of vibe yeah. when the time comes. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. my whole life is like that, you know? Yeah. Um, then, then, like the music, the writing, I'm writing in high school, but I'm not reciting to anyone. And bear in mind, I'm, I'm dancing, I'm into it. So, when I see the, the circles that I rap in, maybe the ciphers or the poetry, for me, it was just whack. <laughs> Why? Because we said, look, she me. And for some reason, like, we, we, like when I tell you about the tap, this dance, I'm telling you that. We, we knew then that what we're doing is crazy. And if we had to be taken anywhere in the world, it's not just Buddha, because it's way it's never been seen. You understand? Yeah. We knew, but we didn't know how maybe how to get ourselves there. It's documented, put it on YouTube. We didn't have the tools. We didn't know. I didn't know then, you know? Um, so, from there, but you have the confidence because you're yes. popular in town. Yes. It's like, at that point, it's so crazy. It's like, Get a new dance was so big now in Durban at that point. If you rap it, we can give you 15 minutes on stage. At our show, we threw the show like we miss, we miss spring. Yeah. We throw Miss Spring, not not the rappers. We get all the corporates. Yeah. It was us, like we the we the we the icons of the scene basically. This is like 90, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002. 2002, but the since they did a scan, so we're not that serious. Yeah. And our parents, yeah, our parents are like, go, go, go work. And most of the scene has moved up to Jobo. Actually, that scene, there's a whole documentary thing we still need to do about yeah. it. Because by the of it, most of, even the guys was I was telling you about, yes. by the yeah. of it right now. And I still have with them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And most of them, they rapping also. They, they on that Durban quite too vibe. Yeah. They're like, yo, we're coming up. You know, it's like the, the next step, because we know 
we know yeah, like this. yeah yeah we've, mm. we've been at it and also we know like the we, we kind of see in the future with your yeah. if because we're in Durban and it's small but mm. we're like your if the whole country that's why these guys came up for the quite yeah. videos so it's like we spread it you know like if the whole country could be on this stuff you know it could be like the Durban like the Durban quite the music right now you know it's yeah. yeah but like before before that it was us trying to push it with dance but dance dance doesn't have audio dance you know what i mean like dance you can't re you can record a video but you can't record it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so it's like now the the new thing is like i'm doing mm -hmm. breaking dances even down to bare bare bone like yeah. where it's like like the taxi driver yes then anyone can do it um but I'd say the like the turning point of yes. that, like the music and the dancing and knowing what to do with it. Yeah. Like I got a scholarship for for like this one year course at Vega. Yeah. Called Imagination Lab. And that just like opened everything. Like these are creative courses. But basically what I've been doing my whole life, this is how you need to package it and this is how you need to present it. So I was like Okay, cool. After that course, I'm never studying. I'm doing what I've been doing forever. But I'm just gonna learn along the way. If yeah. I wanna know about something, pick up a book, mm. get online, try and push. You know what I mean? So it was a conscious decision in terms of you doing this niche type of music? It wasn't really. I was like, for me, it's like, this is how, this is how I wanna sound, or rather, but I don't think about it. Mm. Like me making music is like, a lot of people, yeah, actually, a lot of people will tell you that musicians, when you make music, you basically, you let these energies run through you. I've just been lucky enough to yeah. be living in, in the internet age where I could actually just release it and 15% of people around the world are like, yeah, actually, this is dope, you know? Yeah. And that leads to another 70 and another, yeah. you know. So, so another thing, just getting back, you, you're part of a collective, mm -hmm. what is the Mary? Teddy Parafin is not really a collective, yeah. two men outfit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, performance arts, design, yeah. 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 that's all you guys do. Mm, yeah, well, I guess music comes from that, and yeah. then the videos come come out from that, and then all the other ideas, but initially that's what we wanted to do, like yeah. have a music band that designs and push an aesthetic and uh, just on the basis of cultivating minds in South Africa like yo man you talk like this it's fine it's actually cool that you talk like this yeah. make music in your own slang or your own lingo or you know what I mean like yeah. it's fine some people will get it some people won't yeah. but trust me it's unique and maybe you should actually just put it out yeah. instead of people thinking to make in order for me to rap I gotta sound at least like I've been to New York once, you know what I mean? And it's like, that doesn't make sense, you know? So, so, so can you briefly explain your relationship with Elon, the e Red Bull Academy, mm. and the amount of UK producers in the album? Um, yeah, uh, Red Bull, actually I've never been to Red Bull Academy, and I just missed the, yeah. I just missed the deadline for the forms again. So, but I've done Red Bull Base Camp yeah. last year. Yeah. This year? Or last year? Last year? Last year. Yeah, yeah, so. last year. Um, I've done Red Bull Base Camp. I've recorded a bunch of stuff at the Red, Red Bull Studios yeah. in Cape Town. Um, basically, like, those guys are, um, are some of the people that are like, wow, this is dope. A lot of people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. From the go, from the jump, like, a lot of people don't get it, but they're going to get it. Now people are getting it. Yeah. But those were the guys that were like, nah man, you can fly down to Cape Town, come record, so. So we have that relationship, they're really cool guys. Yeah. I also make music with them, because they also make music. Yeah. So it's like, it's very flexible. And um, oh, Red Bull up yeah. here in, in Joburg, yeah. Red Bull up here in Joburg, we've been, we've been lucky enough to do corner to corner tour, pop up every year at the taxi ramp down yeah. the street now. We've popped up there, yeah. we've popped up at North Taxi Ramp, yeah. but we've popped up maybe in over eight corners of Soweto, yeah. where it's like random, where it's like, yo, what about that? Baga, it's shy, shy, so it was me, it's 
me, uh, me Matambo, um, Russ Solomon from PFG, um, Chocolate, yeah. Wiki Wick, Dr. Um, Spicy as a DJ, yeah. um, BAC, yeah. Sanelli, you know the whole boys and bars. So it's just been, yeah, it's been crazy, man.